Hi, I'm Willie and welcome to my channel. And this is part three of our digital signage with the Raspberry Pi Zero W. And before we get too far into this last video, there are a couple things I want to address when it comes to Raspberry Pis. I have very rarely ever seen a Raspberry Pi board itself go bad. Most of the time when you have a problem with your Raspberry Pi, it's either going to be the SD card or the power source. Those are the two biggest things that I've seen and some people keep stacks of SD cards available because of of those problems. So if you're having problems with your Raspberry Pi, start there. Start with the power source, make sure you have a good power source, and then check your SD card. So in this last video, we uh, are going to talk a little bit about some of the things that you can do uh, with Screenly OSC, such as setting a static IP address, and then we're going to SSH in and take a look. You'll remember we enabled SSH you know, when we first loaded the card. We're going to look at that and talk about un uncomplicated firewall. And then um, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you what our assets look like. And then we'll wrap it up. So let's get down to it here. So there's a couple of things you can do to secure Screenly. But before we get to that, one more quick thing. Somebody asked if there was a way to manage multiple screens using the open source edition. And you could build your own portal. We uh, built a portal through the Barracuda SSL VPN device. And it works pretty well. You could uh, do some Nginx reverse proxy stuff and, and set up your own portal. And use authentication, SSL, all that stuff. So you could play play around with that. I'm not going to get into that. If you want me to build a custom portal for you, you know, go ahead and uh, go over to h5technology.com and fill that out. You know, fill out the contact form and we can talk about that. So as far as the security, what we can kind of do to uh, tighten things up a little bit is there's a screenly.comp file. And we will look at that on the device when we SSH in. Uh, and down here, you can set authentication. So you saw when we went into this that it was wide open, didn't ask for a username and password. So we can set a username and password, and we will we will do that. Then the other thing that we can do is we can set a, set a static IP address on our management workstation that we're going to connect with, and then we can set up uncomplicated firewall, UFW, to only allow us to connect to the Screenly interface, that port 8080, from our machine. So those are the two ways that we're going to talk about in this video. So let's go ahead and fire up uh, SSH here, uh, PuTTY, and we'll SSH in. Now by default, once you enable SSH, the username is going to be Pi and the rasp Raspberry is going to be the password. I'm having trouble talking this evening, sorry about that. But apparently I can't talk and uh, I just got it wrong again. I can't talk and type the password tonight. It also tells us that we are using the default password so we want to uh, issue the password command and we're going to put in the current password which is raspberry and then we're going to change it to a password of our liking. And So now we are no longer using that default password. Okay, so to use the basic auth, we're just going to use a very simple username and password, but we have to get to the proper directory. So what we need to do is we need to view the hidden directories. We need to go to dot screenly. Remember, anything in Linux that begins with a dot is hidden. And then we are going to edit the screenly.conf file. We're going to go down here. We're just going to fill in, you know, and then I am simply just going to reboot this real quick. Yeah, depending on your, your threat model, this may not work for you, so you may want to use the Nginx uh, proxy and, and stick it behind there and do a little bit, uh, a little bit more logging and, and things like that. So, we'll wait for this to reboot, and then we will refresh our screen and see if we get prompted. 
Now, while we're waiting for that, we'll talk about a static IP address. I am not going to set a static IP on this. Uh, I'm going to show you real quick how to do it. Just remember, throw away a little bit of what you know about Linux. Uh, and when you're using Screenly, the open source edition, and, and I think the pro version too, you can't go into the Etsy networking interfaces file and set your static IP. It all has to be done through the network.ini file. So as long as you remember that, you'll be fine. And when we get back into our device, I'll show you that real quick. Let's see if it'll let us in. So if we go to the boot folder, there's the network.ini. So if we were to take under WLAN 0 and make that mode equal static, and then set an IP, a netmask, and a gateway, and then save this and reboot, then your device, if your wireless is set up to allow static addresses, will come up with the static IP. I'm not going to do that, but you can do that here. It's a, a probably a good idea, depending on how you're doing this. So let's refresh our screen and see if we get prompted for a oh, there it is. And of course, you're just going to see uh, these or these these assets. So just rebooted it, so it's taking a, a you know a minute for it to come up. Now you could try to go in and configure SSL and get all that going. Uh, and depending on your environment, you may have to do that. I always recommend enabling SSL on everything if possible. So, but between tying this down to a static IP address for a, um, you know, a workstation, specific workstation or workstations to be able to get into it, plus the basic auth, you're going to cover a lot of scenarios with that. So let's look at what that, that firewall uh, looks like. Now, I don't know if by default... Okay, so by default, uncompl uncomplicated firewall does not come on here. So we're going to do a apt-get install UFW. And it's going to have to verify it and make sure that we want to install it and all that good stuff. So now remember, this is a Raspberry Pi. This is not... Uh, you know, something with an Intel Xeon. So, you know, it's it's going to go a little bit slower, but we're going to get the job done here. Okay, it's going to ask us if we're sure that we want to continue. We will say yes. So it's going to go out and it's going to grab about uh, four megs, five megs of files, and we'll be back. Okay, so UFW is now installed. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to enable it. And we get this little warning that it may interrupt our SSH connection. We'll just say yes, because it shouldn't. We don't have any rules in here yet. So now it is active and enabled on startup. So now remember that a firewall processes its rules from top to bottom, starting at 1 or 0, and, and working its way down. So we're going to do our allow rules before our deny. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to allow SSH and 8080 from my workstation, and then that's it. And my IP is 66.39. So we're going to do sudo ufw allow from 192.168.66.39 to any. And I believe we're going to put 22 in here. Okay. And then we're going to do 8080. And then um, now we're going to do sudo ufw deny from. And so now we can do status. So now we've added all these rules. So we have allowed SSH and 8080, and you can see that we are still connected, but then we have uh, denied 
all other traffic. So only my workstation. So if my IP changes to anything that besides that 39, I am not going to be able to get to this. So, but that's it. Go in, play around with uncomplicated firewall. It's, you can see how easy the syntax is here. So, and I, I use this on all of my Ubuntu and Debian um, servers. So, play around with that. You, sh you know, you should get the hang of it fairly quickly. So, I think I've covered everything. We talked about uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, SD cards, the power adapters. We talked about static IP addresses. We talked about enabling the authentication. We talked about the firewalling. So what I did is I actually captured the HDMI output. So I'm going to go ahead and play you real quick the Raspberry Pi booting up and then what the assets look like as they roll through. And they'll roll through... Uh, you'll get to watch Llama Drama and see all these uh, banners. And so I, uh, I'm i going to bring that to the front here, and we'll watch that for just a second. Okay, so uh, when the Raspberry Pi boots, you'll see this little Raspberry up here. Now, this is Screenly, so you're going to see a Screenly splash page. Normally, you would see all kinds of scrolling text and things like that telling you uh, about the system. So let's go ahead and watch this. The system is booting. And now it's going to come to a screenly splash page here in just a second. And this takes a little while to, to boot. Let's see if we can get past this. Okay, now here's that, the actual splash screen that you can enable, disable. So it tells us to manage the content on the screen, point our browser to. And so that's, that's actually uh, this interface that you're seeing here. So this will sit up here. This sits up here for a little while so that you have the ability to grab this IP address in case you don't know what it is. So we'll skip past this. I actually have an HDMI capture, and that's uh, how I captured this. Okay, so here's our first asset where it loads h5technology.com. That was the first time it loaded it, so the page came up. Here is the second slide and the third slide and now the next thing that it's going to go to is it is going to go to llama drama which is the the movie that's on there and you'll see how smoothly this movie plays so this this you know is on that raspberry pi zero w and it's it's pretty slick so it plays this whole movie this movie's about uh three minutes long and if you've downloaded this, you've seen uh, what it looks like. It's got full audio. It actually has stereo audio. It sounds really good. So there's Llama Drama. And uh, now we're going to go back around, and you'll see that the H5 technology web page is going to come up again. So here's the first asset coming up. And, you know, loaded uh, all the way that time before you had to see it. I've got the, the time cut down on these. Here's that second slide. Now the third slide should be coming up, and then we're going to roll back around into Llama Drama. But I'm going to go ahead and close that. We're going to hop over, and we're going to check out a couple more things on Screenly real quick. So Screenly came out with an app store, and it's, it's actually it's really neat. And the three apps that they have out there right now that you can use for free are the digital clock, the weather, and screencast for WordPress. And screencast for WordPress is amazing. It's a plugin for your WordPress website, and it can create it can take any posting and format it to look awesome on digital signage. So we can take a look at all of these real quick. And it is actually, you know, these are all open and they're all web assets. So you can configure the clock. And we'll scroll out here so you can see. And defaults to England, so we'll move our map over Illinois. And then we'll close it. And now it gives us this URL that we would put in. And we will go to that URL. 
and you can see that it is uh, 11:21 Saturday, September 2nd, 2017. So, and it looks just like this, and it scales beautifully. So check that out. Let's check out the weather app real quick. Uh, let's see. So we'll configure this. We got to do the exact same thing. So we just scroll out. And I'll scroll in here. I don't need it to be super duper accurate. So then it gives us, you know, it uses a latitude longitude. So if you knew your exact latitude longitude, you could just pull that up. And here is what the weather looks like. And I'm telling you, this looks so great on the, you know, the screenly. Uh, Ooh, look at the weather. Going to be 90 on Monday and then mid 60s. I'm digging that. And then the last thing is the the screencast. Uh, and I don't I don't have this where we can look at it, but Screenly does have some videos on it and is awesome. And I am getting ready to run it and do a demo. And uh, Screenly is really changing the digital signage game. So. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a lot from it. If you've got any questions, let me know. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to launch your own digital signage, just like I did in these videos, please use the Amazon affiliate link to order your kit. It doesn't change your price. It just keeps a few bucks rolling in so we can continue to do these cool things on the channel. I appreciate you being here, and I'll see you in the next video.